Hi friends, I'm Felicia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my um, sci-fi and fantasy wrap up for the month of May. I read very many books in May so I'm going to be splitting it up into two videos. Otherwise, uh, you know, me and being rambly, it's going to be a million years long so uh, it's going to be two videos. Okay, so the first books, books that I want to talk about um, are the rest of the books in the Lone City series by Amy Ewing. Um, I read the first book in, finished the first book in April, and then I finished the rest of the series in May. And so I'm just going to talk about them all together. Um, so I read The White Rose and The Black Key, which are books two and three. Um, I also read a short story, which is called Sill's Story, and it's just a story on Epic Reads or something. I don't remember. It's like like maybe four pages total so yeah um but the white rose and the black key i listened to on audio and they were narrated by aaron spencer i had read the white rose when it first came out i didn't retain a lot from from that story so i decided to read it again after reading the first book again anyways if you don't know what the series is about basically it's a young adult take on The Handmaid's Tale. Um, there are also fantasy elements thrown in there. Yeah, it's like a fantasy dystopian interesting series and not a lot of people read it and I mean it's pretty good. Um, it does have one of the worst worst cases of insta-love ever in the history of YA. So I mean if you hate that then you will hate these books. I can look past that <laughs> even though it's not my favorite thing I can look past it. The second book it was pretty good. One of the things that I like about this series is that a lot of different things happen in each book so I don't feel like the middle book had um, the second book slump. I felt like it still progressed the story pretty well. Yeah and then the last book I thought it brought everything to a good conclusion. It didn't build towards the conflict the whole book. What I hate is like right at the, the very end is when the conflict happens and then there's like nothing afterwards like how how it settled down and how people are adjusting and what they're doing after and this book didn't do that it left enough time at the end to kind of you know settle everything down and keep going and so that part um I thought was really good I just really enjoyed reading this series I thought it was interesting and I thought that the author brought it to a good place then the next book that I want to talk about is The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave I just I'm never confident about the order of those names I read this for the book buddy-a-thon with my buddy Angela from Coffee and Chapters she actually got me this book for Christmas and so I was excited to read it this is a it's I'd say it's middle grade middle grade story about a girl who lives on an island um, it's a very kind of closed off island um, the people that live there don't know lots about the world outside now I don't remember if it's a war but the island has been kind of taken over by the military and so these people are living in a lot of seclusion just because the military isn't allowing information in and so our main character um her father is a cartographer he makes maps there's also a lot of mystery about the actual island that i live on there's a part in the middle that has never been charted um it's kind of like a forbidden area and so that holds a lot of intrigue for our main character isabella and her dad one day isabella's best friend goes missing into this area and so isabella is determined that she's gonna go save her best friend and so that's kind of where our story takes off and I loved this. This was really good. It was really strong writing I thought for a middle grade book. It definitely captured my interest the whole time. One of the things I like about reading middle grade is that they don't they don't waffle around setting up the story and the plot and the characters. The The writing is simple enough that you just get right to the characters, you get right into the world, and you get right into the plot. And so I like that and I thought this book did it really well. And the story was was just beautiful and the writing was beautiful. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I would really recommend it. This is the UK edition and I believe in North America it's actually called The Cartographer's Daughter which is a much more boring title than The Girl of Ink and Stars. Um, <laughs> this cover is also way more beautiful. 
Um, but yeah, I would really recommend this if you're into middle grade at all. Um, I thought it was just really good. So the next two books that I want to talk about are A Duology and they are Bell's Tale and The Beast Tale. And these are manga novelizations of the new Beauty and the Beast movie that came out this year. And um, they're by Mallory Reeves. And I really enjoyed reading these. Um, I got them as an arc from Neck Alley. Yeah, I... <laughs> I mean, I liked, I really loved the new, I, I loved the new movie and so um, I really wanted to read these. Also, I've just been into manga. So basically they just take the movie and manga eyes it. <laughs> and um, there are some things added, uh, more their their inner thoughts. So the first one follows just Belle throughout the movie and then the second one follows just the beast throughout the movie and so we see kind of the events from both sides um like when uh, Belle is captured and put in the in the cell and you know stuff like that I don't know if they're pretty basic they just follow the movie plot and there's like just very little added added at all but I would recommend it if you see it and you're a Beauty and the Beast fan like definitely go ahead and read it it was fun I don't know if this is sci-fi fantasy but I read volume 14 of Fruits Basket basically that's all I have to say about that I already forgot what happened in the last one. Once I read the next one, I'll remember, but I don't remember right now what happened in it. The next book, I guess it's like more paranormal fantasy, urban fantasy. I don't know what it is. Um, but I read Freaks by Amanda Hawking, and this is not my favorite book. This book is set in a traveling circus. Um, in the 80s and our main character is a part of this circus. Her mom joined the circus when she was little and so she's grown up there and it's like her family and basically they come to this town that they were invited to and it's really weird and weird things start happening to the people in the circus. There are people in the circus they all kind of have supernatural abilities so things start happening that mess with those abilities that they have and it's just really weird and I didn't really enjoy this book first of all because this I don't enjoy all that supernatural stuff um second of all because the story was just really repetitive it takes place over a week and same things keep happening every day and so it's like okay I get it. This is what's happening. This is very boring. Yeah, it took me a while to get through this. I didn't, didn't enjoy it really. And I would not really recommend it. Just because it has a circus theme doesn't mean that it's like the Night Circus because it's definitely not. I read Freaks because a Reads with Friends Goodreads group was, I believe Shannon was contacted by a publicist for the book and asked if our group would read it and we did and none of us really liked it so yeah. Last book and novella that I want to talk about is The Ship by Antonia Honeywell and then the novella The Time Being and so The Ship is um I got that book as an arc on Neck Ellie. I requested it because it sounded uh the premise sounded kind of similar to Station Eleven so you know I'm all about that and it's set in the future when a kind of nature goes to crap and society goes to crap and there's no fresh food and there's just kind of chaos and anarchy and you know people are being killed in the streets every day and so our main character Lala her dad develops a system for kind of controlling the population in terms of like keeping people in order I guess and um, they have identity cards and Without an identity card you can't get food rations or anything so it kind of keeps people in line um, as a result of that they get very rich and Lala's dad and her mom they decide that they are going to build a ship to save humanity to save their family and then other people as well and the ship is going to take them somewhere where they can start fresh and so for years Lola's dad is getting the ship together, getting supplies and everything and then one day they are ready and so that's where the story takes off is when they decide to go to the ship 
uh, that they're ready to go. The premise sounded really interesting. I thought it had a lot of potential. Unfortunately, it just wasn't really executed very well. Uh, the main character, Lala, I just didn't like her at all. She felt she's supposed to be 16 and I kept forgetting that she wasn't 11. So there are things that she does in the book and I'm like, 11 year olds shouldn't do that. But she was actually 16. <laughs> so, but she, she just felt very, she was very naive. Her parents sheltered her from what was going on in the world, but like, ain't no way a 16 year old is actually that sheltered and like not asking questions at all of her parents. Like I just didn't buy it at all. And this, again, this book was another book where the same thing just kept happening over and over and over and over. There were some things that I saw coming right from a few chapters in. I'm like, this is what's happening. And then it did happen. And then the ending was just really dumb. I did not like the ending at all. Either she shouldn't have ended it, ended the book like that, or she should have kept going. It was either either one of those. I just was not satisfied with the ending at all. I was like, really? I read this whole book and that's how you ended? Yeah, I just didn't really enjoy reading it at all. But then I decided to read the prequel short story as well. <laughs> I'm not, not sure why I did that either, but that one was actually kind of more interesting because it actually does take place when Lala is 11 or 12. So then the voice works and it it tells more about how they came up with the idea for the ship. Yeah, I yeah, I would just give I would give this book a pass. I just I'm trying to find a book that's like Station 11 and I just get let down every time. But yeah, so those are all the sci-fi fantasy-ish books that I read in May and if you've read any of these books let me know. I bet some of these books you haven't even heard about. <laughs> so probably a really obscure reading month for me. But yeah I'd love to know your thoughts down below and I will be coming at you soon with my um, everything else wrap up. I think it's mostly contemporary and classics. But yeah so until next time so long and thanks for all the fish.